Hi everybody, it's Brian the Scrap Guy, and today I've got a quick video for you in answer to a challenge from Jennifer, who is a loyal, loyal follower who leaves amazing comments that I love to read, and I appreciate her so much. Um, she sent in a challenge to do, uh, to deal with a baby shower for her, uh, I believe it's her sister-in-law, and, um... The issue is there's no theme for the shower at this moment, and that she's having twins, a boy and a girl. So double the ante by having a boy and a girl, and no theme. So today we're going to show you my interpretation of what I think a great invitation would be for this particular shower, as well as some decorations and some things to tie in to what I'm going to post tomorrow as the thank you note and some additional party decorations using a couple of Cricut cartridges. Today, there's absolutely no Cricut cut. So that's the best part about the invitation. So here's a finished example of what the invitation looks like. You can either send it in landscape or portrait. They both look great. And we're going to assemble one just now. So it's four layers, really simple. And then I'm going to show you how I do my, my ribbon technique that I've had a number of questions about. So first off, I... <coughs> excuse me, I'm still getting over a cold. Have taken four sheets of 12 by 12 paper and you're able to get four invitations out of the 12 out of the four sheets of paper. I have a light pink, a chocolate brown, a baby blue, and then a cream. And this cream you can put through your printer to print all of the information for your party, the whereabout, the RSVP, the date, the whole nine yards, and it does fit. I did test it, but I used something from work, so I didn't want to put that onto the card. So we're going to walk you through the assembly of the card. So first off, I took the four colored layers, and you can alternate. See, this one starts with pink, and then goes brown and blue. The one I'm going to do now goes blue, brown, pink. So, you know, some people will get one, some people will get the other, but it all ties together because you'll see my madness in a second. I used three different um, embossing folders. For the bottom layer, the base layer, I used the Sizzix Large Polka Dot. Now, this is very similar to the polka dot that just came out from uh, Provocraft, so you could use either. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. So I've already sent it through the cuddle bug, and you get a nice polka dot. Kind of looks like a large Lego to me. Then the next layer, which I've cut down. <coughs> Excuse me. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. So really simple size, base size. Then I took the next layer up, and I used what's called the medium polka dot from Sizzix that I got from Oh My Crafts for like $1.98. And you can see the scale difference. Medium, large, medium, large. It's about half the size. And I cut down a half inch on the top and one side, which would then give you a quarter inch difference on your... On all four sides. So then I take my ATG gun, which you know I love my ATG gun. And then you just place it. Precision is not necessary. Then your brown layer. Um, you can mix it up. I kind of did it wrong, but you'll get the gist of it kind of playing around with color. So not all of the invitations have to be exactly the same. And then I took the brown layer and cut it down from the original size. It's now cut down a full inch. So you go down uh, a half inch from each layer. So then your printed layer will go on top here. And I think that ties it all together. And you can do any layer, any color you want. on there, and you can see how the ribbon ties it together in the polka dot. Oh, that's better. I should have done that from the beginning, right? Um, so what I've done here is I've taken ribbon and threaded it through and tied it into a knot. And that's what the back looks like. How I do this has, I've had a number of questions. I use the Fiskars Ribbon Punch, and it looks exactly like this, and you can get it at Joann's for 40% off any given Tuesday. Um, and I've actually used it a lot. It wasn't, I didn't think I was going to. I actually bought it for one project in mine, and I use this technique a lot because it's actually pretty cool. Um, so what I've done is, on the back of the card, I've marked in a quarter of an inch from either side. So here, you turn your 
punch upside down. So let me see if I can do this backwards. And then you thread in one side. And you can't see it, but I do have my guideline. Uh, let's see, can you see? Oh, I don't think you can see it, but there is an orange guideline in there. I line it up with a third hole. Make sure it's in there flat before I do it. And then I punch. And then I do the same thing on the other side to get three holes. And you want three holes, so you can do it up, down, and then back up. Sorry if I'm out of camera. I'm trying to... Okay, so there's your three holes. And then you take your ribbon that's cut into small pieces. So you can use scraps for this even uh, if you have them. But I'm using a polka dotted yarn, a polka dotted ribbon that I got at Michael's that were two spools for three dollars. And you'll see where this polka dot theme really comes into play with the cuddle bugging and the ribbon and um, some of the decorations that I'm going to show you and some of the pictures that I have. Then you just thread it through. And I went in a quarter of an inch from the edge to give me plenty of space to be able to cover up what I'm going to do here. And I just added a little bit of ATG gun tape and then I'm going to fold it down into, kind of mitered it into the card. So now you have your loosey-goosey piece hanging here in the front. You do the same thing with the other side. And you want to make sure you have an odd number so you can go up, down, and then back up. You always want to end on the up with your ribbon on the outside so you can tie your knot. And then just a little, you can use regular scotch tape. I don't like scotch tape. So I just use my ATG gun. Um, and then I tie it in a knot. So remember, when you're tying your knot, that you need to make sure that you cheat your ribbon by twisting it as you're tying it so your colors stay on the outside, especially if it's a one-way printed ribbon. And sometimes it's a little bit harder than it looks. You just have to play with it for a little bit. You tie it in a great, nice, tight knot, and then you cut off your edges with a pair of nice sharp scissors. See, look how cute that is, right? And then you just take your ATG. It's a little bit harder once you put your ribbon on there, so just kind of probably went a little crazy with the ATG there. And I like ATG because if there's any tape off um, hanging off the corners, you can just like roll your finger over it and it comes right off. And how cute is that? So your blue matches your blue here, your pink matches your pink here, you've got your brown, so you've got your whole color combination, and then you can print your invitation information right there. And when you print it, just make sure you set your margins uh, for an inch at the top and a bottom, and at least a quarter to a half inch on the sides, centering your typeface. You can use any font, which, you know, could be exciting because tomorrow I'm going to show you some decorations with nursery rhymes <coughs> because it'll tie in with the plates and napkins that I found at um, Hobby Lobby. And the invitations, if you made 20 of them and you found your paper on four for a dollar, you would be able to make 20 invitations for less than $10 plus the ribbon. Um, simple, easy cuts, um, very easy. You saw how fast I did it, other than the cuddle bug bugging, because I did that before um, I came on. And so in about 10 minutes, you can have uh, great, professional-looking invitations. So if you need anything or have any questions, just send me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And then you'll see tomorrow a thank you card and um, some additional decorations for... Um, the shower, as well as a potential party game and shower gift that you can then give the mother-to-be after the shower is over. I'll have a picture of this on my blog so you'll get a better look. Uh, thanks for stopping in, and uh, leave those comments. Really appreciate them. Make it a great one. Bye.